dude, that, thanks so much for, you know, taking a little time. I mean, you can stay as long, as short as you want. You're a busy guy, you know, got to talk to these NFL teams, lift weights, run. I mean, wh where are you, Dwayne? Like, and, and what's your day-to-day -day like right now? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a steady grind right now. Um, I'm in here. I'm here in Tampa, Florida, uh, training with Yo Murphy. Yeah. You know, so he, he's really good at what he does. Uh, so, you know, we're doing two a days, doing field work in the morning, uh, have a little bit of time. And then uh, later on in that morning or that evening, early evening, we'll have a lift. And then outside of that, it's our interviews, taking care of my body, making sure I'm eating right. So it's, it's full scale all over. Love it, man. Love it. Well, we're just going to oh, yeah. kind of free flow. And these are our subscribers that go along, the, the loyalists, the loyalists of the loyal bunch here. So... I'm yes, sure we're gonna want to pick your brain a little, but um, just real quick though on Yo Murphy, like he is he's in, intense, isn't he? Like that, oh, I've yeah. run across a lot of trainers, but he's kind of next level. Played receiver for the Bucks, what back in the '90s, and mm -hmm. something else down there, I imagine. Oh yeah, it's great being around him. He's a, he's a very he has a lot of wisdom in him outside of football and obviously in football. So you know, it's great working with him because he he attacks every every aspect of us really. Nice. <clears throat> oh man, well, hey, I, I don't want to haunt this. I, Dwayne put up with me for like 45 minutes a couple weeks ago. So, uh, whoever <laughs> wants, just, just jump, jump. And watch, by the way, Dwayne, thanks again for all the time. So, I appreciate no it. No doubt. No doubt. What do you, what do you think, Mike? I think I saw you raising oh. your hand. Well, actually, I, I don't know. You were uh, maybe answering a question when I signed on, but has there been anything, you know, with regards to your prep for the draft process? Or for the pro day that was like a little weird like a little unexpected and untraditional um i wouldn't say non-traditional um going through interview school like prepping myself for the interviews to come is certain things that i should talk about or i should lengthen there's things that i shouldn't talk about and shouldn't leave uh lengthen so you know it's different because part of the um a part of the process until i really got there really so i would i would say that's probably the most oddest thing i would say And your pro days in in two weeks, right? I mean, it's four four two nine. That's uh, that's still the goal, oh, yeah. right? Oh yeah, most definitely. <laughs> yeah. What um, what was it really like? I mean, we touched on it a little bit, Dwayne. Like when you're in, so you're growing up in Mississippi. You got what a couple fast food joints. You said you know the grocery store shuts. There's not a lot going on. You move up to Indiana. Man, what was your childhood really like? You know, what do you think kind of made you who you are above all else that you can tell these guys? Oh, I feel like it was it was fun. Like really, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. I feel like since we didn't have as many resources, you know, we kind of had to make our fun out of nothing. You know, so we would, we would come up with games, different stuff that we would do. We was outside all day, just doing stuff all day. Didn't even want to come inside to get a drink of water. So, you know, we just always made our fun and did what we have to do. You know, I still feel like I do that to this day. You know, I don't, I don't really do too much. Pretty simple. Um, so I can just, I can find the fun out of the simple stuff. Chasing rabbits, you said, right? Just kind of uh, ch chasing rabbits. Yeah, that was in Indiana. That was, that was just really a one to Well, I, I probably did it a couple of times. Uh, every time <laughs> I got close enough to one, but I'll never forget the one that I caught. <laughs> but it wasn't, but it wasn't nothing too often because they ain't really let you get that close, but I remember. Yeah, it's I got me one of them. It is always tough to figure out like where that where speed just comes from, you know. I mean that rare four two four three speed. I mean, is it nature? Is it nurture? Is it like a combination of both? It seems like you just mostly kind of worked at it and, and got to this yeah. point with that. Yeah, I say it's definitely nature and nurture uh, for sure. Because uh, my uncle he was fast. A couple other people in my family that were fast in different ways. Um, but like I said, I was always a competitor, so I always wanted to be faster than everybody else. And back then when I was young, um, my mindset of thinking really wasn't thinking. You know, I was just going outside and doing stuff. We just played sports. We didn't think about the details. We didn't think about anything that we had to do. So it was out there just really running and playing free. And, you know, I feel like that set me up for my future because I was always just doing something. Hey, Did you play other sports? Jump right in. Did you, play other sports, did you play other sports growing up besides football? Yeah, I played basketball, um, and I ran track as well. Track. Yeah. You're the fastest guy out there, probably. 
<laughs> yeah. It was a lot of times during the regular season or uh, with the regular meets, I didn't even have to run. I probably run 50 meters and the 100. I probably run maybe 120, just the curve and the uh, the 200. So I didn't really, I didn't really run against competition to about regionals and state really. We got a we got a lot up some Bills and some Packers fans on here. I think uh, they could. Both teams could probably use you, you know, as a as a weapon in their offense. Have you talked to them at all? I mean, what's that been like? I mean, but I mean, imagine you're zooming with a lot of teams. You can't meet with them in person this year. Yeah, yeah, I, I zoom with a lot of teams, you know, because a lot of people didn't really know who I was until the Senior Bowl. So you know, just having that exposure now, everybody's trying to figure out who I am, and, you know, kind of things that I'm about. So yeah, I've been talking to a lot of teams. You know, I always see the mock drafts sometimes. I try not to look at them. Just not to add that stress on it, but yeah, I see it, you know. But it's steady working to that man, the man goal. Just get on any team, it don't really matter who it is. Yeah. So, the Chad Hall, the receivers coach, has he been shooting you text messages, checking in, you know? He's from the um Packers, he, he's with the Bills. I, I was when I was, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I spoke with them, yeah. yeah, I spoke with them a couple of times. It, it seems like they're kind of after a receiver. I, I think it was Marquez Stevenson. I was hanging out with him in Florida last week. He goes, hey, yeah. look at this. And it was like this long message from Chad Hall. So I don't know. Yeah. They, they could use you. They could use some speed. Oh, yeah. They make the move. You know, it's the right move with me. <laughs> Any, anybody else want to pop in here? What we got? Yeah, I've got one. So uh, wrapping up your college career, are there any guys on the field that you are sort of glad to leave behind, somebody that tested you or somebody you're glad to see at the next level maybe? Um, well, I'm going, I'm going through this process with my roommate, uh, Jalen Moore. He's an offensive tackle. Um, he was at the senior ball as well. So, you know, it's definitely fun going through this process with a partner. You know, I look at him as a brother. So, you know, it's fun to keep each other up. And then once we get back to case, we're going to be able to be in the same crib again, you know. So it'll be good. So I'm definitely proud of that. I also had a rough week at the office. So I need some pointers. How do you get your zen when you've had a rough week? Um, I would just say being present in the moment. You know, it's, uh, don't let the circumstance dictate your behavior. You know, so I, I would just say being present in the moment and know that it's going to fly by and then the next week going to be good. You just got to put that energy towards it. This past season, I mean, you play six games. I mean, you have only six – I mean, it's, it's half of the season basically. And I don't really know what else you could have done just going back and, and looking at those. Obviously, the numbers speak for itself. But, man, just to be in that kind of season with COVID, you don't know what's going to happen week to week. I mean, I think you – Though the Mac, I think right away, the Mac was like, we're only going to play six games. But then it was still kind of weird. You're driving to some places, yet you still had, what, like 150 yards a game, whatever it was. Like, God, just how, how strange was it? Like, I mean, you, your life, your livelihood is on the line this past year. Like, you, you break your collarbone the year before. You know you got the speed. You know you've got this ability. You're playing on defense. You're playing on offense. You're returning kicks. And you only got these six games, you know, to do something with, with your future. Was that, I mean, did you feel that pressure? Was it kind of stressful week in and week out? Yeah, it, it was some forms of pressure, um, just being conscientious of it, you know, but everything that I did was intentional towards my main goal, you know, so I just made sure that I handled all the business that I needed to handle so I could control what I can control, you know, because all the un, the other uncontrollables, you know, if I get into that, then I'm just, I'm doing myself a disservice. I knew there was a possibility to, um, a possibility for games to be canceled. Um, even for the season to be canceled again after they brought it back. But, you know, I just I always is basically just stay true to it. You know, I was, every opportunity that I had, I was going to be ready for it. I'm not going to get into a mindset of I think this should be canceled. You know, so I just kept on attacking. And then, you know, the rest is God. Man, that uh, was it the, the Central Michigan game was, I mean, that, that, that was the one that really, I imagine, kind of puts you on the radar for, for a lot of teams. Well, just to take us through that. What four catches, two thirteen, three touchdowns? That that was pretty ridiculous. Yeah, it was cool. I, I wouldn't say that was one of my better games, though. Um, I, I had some stuff that I really 
Should have did better, um, for sure. It was definitely a tough day since we did drive to the game on that day. You know, it was it was it was different. <clears throat> but but yeah, I was definitely proud of the guys that game. You know, because we was all like that, like the whole first quarter. You know, we went down quick. You know, it just showed what type of team we were really because we got out of that hole. And then once the momentum went, you know, we just kept it there. You know, so I, I owe a lot to Caleb uh, trusting me, and then everybody doing their job really. It, it was really like, I mean, just c- catch the ball, turn, outrun everybody. Like that, that I would imagine that's something that c- can translate to the NFL. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I was definitely came into that game knowing that I was going to do something like that. So all I had to do was do my job. Awesome. Well, what, what do you guys think? Anybody got something out there? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious to know a little bit about uh, – how do you go about picking an agent through this process? You know, you're coming out. Uh, do you get recommendations? Uh, is there somebody you already had in mind? Yeah, that, that's a great question. You know, I definitely appreciate you asking that because a lot of people kind of look over this part and don't understand how tough it really is on us athletes. Um, because really, like, the hardest part was, like, until I had to really start the process of picking an agent, I didn't even know what the agent was. Like, I didn't know, <laughs> like, what they did. Uh, you know, kind of the things that they control. So I'm literally like every, it was a point of time for like three weeks straight while I was on the phone with like four different agents a day trying to do this, trying to figure out, do they mend well with my mentality? Do they mend well with what I want to accomplish? Do they have enough fire behind them to be able to talk to these GMs? So I'm constantly just learning different things during that process, you know? So um, definitely the recommendations, that was very helpful because if you have somebody that can recommend something that you already trust, um, that makes it a lot easier. Um, so that's how I ended up picking. Um, that's how I ended up narrowing down my three agents, which a lot of it was because of the relationships that I had with the people that recommended them. Because if I can trust them, you know, in a sense, they got to be kind of similar because they have a relationship with them. Um, so, yeah, it, it, was a, it was just a lot of learning about, about the game um, outside of the, the football field, you know, around that big oval desk. So... But it was tough, though. But I, I would say to anybody that's going through that process, you know, just be able to have other people that you can have involved that you already trust, you know, because if somebody has your better interest, they can be able to talk to another person and then see if they're really about what they're talking about. And I got to just to add real quick, like your your agency is like the best to work with as well or right up there. I mean, that's how we connected. I mean, Alexis, Rebecca, the whole Tatiana, they're, they're great. So I, who is yeah. your agent like though with your contract? I know there's a bunch of people at the agency. Yeah, it's Doug Henderson and CJ LeBoy. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're really good. So yeah, you found, found some good Oh yeah, there. best in the game. Yeah. Most I think uh, Andy had his hand up there a couple seconds ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, it seems like lots of corners started out as wide receivers and then transitioned to corner. I see you did the exact opposite of that. Mm. Do you find that that uniqueness gives you some sort of advantage? Most definitely. Yeah, me being able to adapt. Because I, because not too many people know this, but I came into um, Western Michigan as a running back. So I had to make the transition from okay. running back to receiver when I got to Western. <clears throat> so me already having that in my back pocket, you know, I kind of thought about that situation during that time. So... You know, I know exactly what I had to do. It just took a little bit of hard work. And then, Hi, Dwayne. I'm oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Keep, oh, oh, I was just going to ask, like, you know, as you kind of transition to the next step, is there, like, a current or past player that is, like, the, the guy I want to emulate in the next level? Um, I would say Steve Smith. I love Steve Smith. Is what he brings to the game, really. Um, and then... Like my my favorite player was always Adrian Peterson. I always wanted to be just like Adrian Peterson. So I, I would say one of those two. Cool. Dwayne, uh, first thanks for taking some time to do this. I think it's it's uh, really cool for us to get to talk to you and get get some inside perspective. Um, so I'm a big fan of the draft. I'm obsessed with it. And you played my favorite position to scout, even if it's you know an unofficial scouting uh, role in wide receiver. Um, I did a little research on you and, and uh, watched some of your film, but um, one of the things that actually um, the draft network had written about you was that you're a day one starter uh, for punt and kick returns, and you have the opportunity to really develop into a nice uh, slot receiver. Um, commenting on your, obviously your speed, your ability to get down the field, 
um, but also that you go up and you you aggressively attack the ball uh, to catch the ball. So, what what do you take pride in with your game? What is your best uh, your what's your best attribute? Do you think? And you know what what type of team should be looking for you? What type of teams? You know what do they need and what could you bring to the table? Definitely, that's a great question. Um, one of the things that I I think my biggest attribute is, is I can cancel out the outside noise. You know, because I, I see a lot of things that the NFL writes about me and the people um, kind of say about me and stuff like that. But me being able to cancel that out because I don't think I'm just a slot receiver. Um, I definitely don't think I'm just a one position type of guy. You know, because I play running back, I play receiver, I play DB, and I feel like I play them all in a different, at a, at a high level. Um, but really, you know, what I, what I bring to a team is versatility, really, you know. Um, on special teams, on offense. Um, I feel like I could play nickel one day if it ever came down to it, you know. So now I feel like I can pick up where any loose change is, really, you know. And I'm very confident in myself to be able to go in and really prove that to a team. And and the comp that the draft network actually gave you was Steve Smith. Uh, so you know, it seems pretty yeah. that you know that, that mm-hmm. that's the type of player that you are. And, you know how valuable those types of players now because it's also it's a, it's a combination of route route running and speed and and being able to go and high point a ball you know despite Definitely. despite you know height right Definitely. Yeah, so I got to be able to, all my areas have to be played at a high level just because of my disadvantage when it comes to height. So I always have to be great at my releases. I always have to be great at separation, you know, but that comes easy being a competitor. So I feel very confident in that area. What is even route running anymore? I don't know, like, I feel like, you know, back back in the day, you had like the route tree, you know, you had one through nine, like this is that. Mm. Today, it's just kind of like, all right, a video like, game. Yeah, like like Stevie Johnson, you know, he like mm-hmm. he, he ran some you know wild routes. I didn't even know what you'd call it, but like to you, like do you in your mind, is there a route tree or is it just kind of like, all right, I got to get to this spot this way? Um, what? I mean, I guess it plays to your advantage being you know a former running back, cornerback, you know, doing all these different things. But like, how how do you process that mentally on just the, the kind of routes you'd have to run in the NFL? Yeah, so it's it's how you train, really, um, because I've always been I've um, I've had coaches that are big on details. You know, it's, it's, a route is very detailed when it comes to sense of the things that you have to be able to know when things change quickly. Um, so I, I would I would say that really, you know, it's it's definitely tough. Um, you got to be able to process things quick on your feet because um, now the game is so advanced. You know, everybody is fast. There's D line was running four threes, linebackers running four threes. So everybody is fast. You got to be able to process things differently. Um, not differently um, in a faster way, just to be able to get open now because everybody everybody can keep up. So true. Yeah. Corey? Yeah, I was just curious, you know, since we're talking about route running, is there a guy that, you know, in the NFL you watch film on to kind of, you know, learn different techniques in terms of, you know, a twitch at the line or, you know, a way to get open, you know, you know, really improving your route running, you know, coming into the league. Definitely. Yeah. So I, I, I watched some of the guys that are similar to me, like all the speed guys, Tyreek, Cohen, you know, all those type of guys, but I also um, watch people that are kind of different from me that kind of use their speed in a different way. Um, so I like watching Stefan Diggs when it comes to releases and how he gets open. Um, and I like watching um, Adam Thielen, too, because he always creates separation, but he's not a 4-3 or a 4-2 type of guy. So it doesn't, like, in a sense, I go in as it doesn't make sense for him to average 100 yards in the NFL. So, you know, I just try to find the things that he does right. Um, and then, um, I don't know why I can't think of his name right now. I mean, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, you know, I, I watch him uh, to see how he attacks the ball. You know, so I just try to take a, a lot from everybody else to be able to apply to my game. You know, whatever they do good, I'm trying to figure out how they do it and then apply it to me. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I, I don't want to hog the airspace here. I know it. Don, good to see you, man. Just just subscribed. Thank you. Out, out <laughs> in Clarence Center. Uh, <laughs> you got anything for Dwayne here? Yeah, I was just going to ask him, um, what what was it like playing in the MAC, and how do you think that compares to uh, or prepared you to play in the NFL? Because there's so many players that come from that conference now, and it's not 
highly regarded overall, like it's like one of the power conferences, but so many good players do come out of the conference. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel like it's, it's a lot of different players um, that come from different circumstances. You know, you got to be in a position young where like you, like it, it's already set in your life, you know, and me just being where I was in Indiana, that plays a role in it, you know, when it comes to exposure. So I feel like a lot of these guys that come to this conference and being, you know, it's, they just get brighter and brighter every single year, you know, obviously getting better, but then like the whole time they should have been in the big 10. They should have been there because there's always a lot of great players in the Mac. You know, it's just good. It's good overshadowed by the bigger conferences. But I think some of the best players in the country every single year in the Mac. Why are so, Mac games just crazy? Like every Mac game that's on TV is just yeah. bad shit. Nuts. <laughs> like, why is that? I don't even know because I, I honestly don't think it's ever too crazy just because I'm on the field. So I'm always yeah. locked in and to what I'm doing. So I could imagine from the outside looking in, it, I know it's crazy. <laughs> I know it is. Awesome. Man, we've been going around the horn. I know, J Jim, I haven't gotten to you yet. You got anything for Dwayne here? Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, no no drinking for me tonight. I'm, I'm obviously in the car here. So, uh, <laughs> good, but, that's good. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm, I was wondering, you know, obviously this year, no combine. Um, what's that like for a guy like you? Does it change things at all? Uh, are you still able to kind of, you know, make the connections you want to make pre before the draft? Yeah, so it, it's, it's still a lot going on. Really, the only thing that's not going on is the in-person stuff. So I'm doing meetings on Zoom a lot during the week um, with different doctors from the teams for different um, personnel, uh, coaches, like all that stuff. So I'm still talking to everybody. It's just we don't have it in person. So it's pretty much the same. We get a little bit more flexibility when it comes to um, being able to train and not having to go all the way to Indianapolis to be able to kind of mess up our routine. So I think I think it's a little bit better since we can actually focus on the main goal that we have is to get to the um, get drafted to a team. Yeah, thank you. And 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 I know you probably won't. You can't tell us who, but do you, as you look at like the the teams in the league, are you, do you see like certain coaches or quarterbacks? You say, eh, I don't want to end up there. You know, uh, I hope they don't draft me. Um, or or is it kind of like you know, I, I'm gonna be wherever it is. I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna find success. Yeah, yeah. That's a slick question right there. <laughs> He's good. He's good. <laughs> But no, nah, like so I, I like I'm, I'm I'm lucky enough, to, you know, not to be able to be faced with anything like that. Every meeting I've had, you know, I think me molding with the coaching staff has went well with pretty much every team. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like it's great. I'm definitely the type of person that's trying to get just be on a team. Really, I don't care when it is, I don't care where it is. You know, I just need to play football. You know, everything that we're doing right now is so far away from the actual game of football. You know, so I'm just excited to get on a team and be able to play again. Like when you broke your collarbone in 19 and, you know, are you even thinking that the NFL's going to happen? Are you having to think, all right, when I graduate, I might have to do this for a, a living or, I mean, cause it's, I mean, yeah, you, you know, you had some good numbers, you had some good seasons, obviously, but this past year is what really seemed to put you on the map. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It was a lot. Um, it was definitely tough for me um, when I broke my collarbone because it was, it was at a critical time, but you know, even just, just during my whole process, you know, this guy, he was just, he, he was really present in all of that, you know, because it was a couple of things that had to happen for me to be able to play that next year. Like if I would have got hurt like 10 minutes later into the next quarter, like seven minutes later, um, I would have used up all of my, I wouldn't have been able to red shirt. So it was literally like a time gap that's like 10 minutes, you know, so, you know, I just, I just trusted the process, you know, I accepted that if football was done, you know, I would be successful in my way that I wanted to be successful, you know, so that, that brought another love to the game of football. So now I just go out there and have fun. Some of the pressure that I had before, you know, it's kind of alleviated. So I learned, I learned a lot during that, that collarbone, you know, I think at the worst of times you learn the most. I definitely learned the most about myself during that time. So that, that's crazy. It was that close. And then you would have had, how, how does that work out exactly with your red shirt? What, what, how did that go down? It's some, it's some um, amount of quarters. So like for you to be able to red shirt, because a lot of guys, they red shirt their first um, year because of just the amount of time they didn't play. So I think it's like to not red shirt, you had to pay like 20 quarters or something like that. So then once like since I was on the back end of mine and this was the first, uh, the fourth game of that season, you know, it was, 
it was crazy time, you know. So I, I owe a lot to God because I knew I knew right then once I understood that that you know this is what I was supposed to do. That's not so. Yeah, I mean, if you if you kept playing, then then that's it. Yeah. That season's it. Like you're, there is it. no twenty twenty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like this crazy twenty twenty football season that you know a lot of college football players hate. I mean, that was a gift mm-hmm. to you, like six games that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Most definitely. So, yeah, I'm definitely grateful for it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, man, well, thanks so much for popping on here. I know, Corey, and by the way, Corey, good to see you, man. This is your uh, happy hour debut, so thanks for subscribing. As well as Colin down there. Colin just joined. Former college roommate. Good to see you, man. (laughs) Sorry, Corey. I was just curious. No, no, no worries. I was just curious. I'm sure you've gotten, you know, asked this question a thousand times, but what age, you know, how young were you when you realized that you were fast? You know, were, were you three, four, five? Was it elementary school? I'm just curious, a guy of your speed, if it happened when you were younger, or, you know, as you developed, you just gained the speed? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I was young. I was always, like, faster than, well, no, I wouldn't say always, because um, I remember this, because I used to lose in races a lot around, like, fourth grade to this guy that was in my class. And he was just, like, that was always the fuel to the fire. I'm trying to get faster just to beat him. Um, but when I really say I started taking off was about eighth grade, um, just cause it was just a big jump from sixth, seventh to eighth grade. So it was probably around that time where I started feeling myself leaving everybody else. Gotcha. Yeah, I was fast when I was five, but you know, once I turned six, <laughs> everybody started to go by. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I was with my height. I was taller than everybody. And then as soon as I saw people creeping up, I knew it was over. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, I know you just hopped in, but uh, have you been, you know, grinding your, your Dwayne Eskridge uh, game film over there? I did. While I was putting my daughter to bed, I was reading up on the, the draft profile. You're getting compared to Steve Smith. Uh, what other kind of, you know, NFL, uh, you know, pros, veterans, Hall of Famers do you aspire to be like? And, um, you know, I know your career's, you know, a lot of runway ahead of you, but what, what are your uh, aspirations? Um, some of the people that I, that I try to follow behind, I would say, um, I always, I was a running back, so I always loved Adrian Peterson. You know, that was always my favorite player. Um, I like Marvin Harrison and um, Reggie Wayne a lot when they played for the Colts. You know, I used to always watch those guys, um, even though I didn't play the position at that time. But I did like uh, kind of modeling myself around them when I did play receiver. Um, and then like now in the new age, you know, obviously Tyreek Hill, you know, he, he plays the game at a high level. You know, he does what he does. Great. So, you know, I always trying to learn something from him if I can get some film or if I see something on social media. Um, and my aspirations really, you know, is just to be, have a healthy career really, you know, cause I know my potential is much higher than, you know, a lot of people think, you know, cause I feel like there's just a lot of things that haven't happened yet. You know, I feel like I'm going to tap into that soon. Um, so I just, I just want to be, you know, one of the best when it's all said and done, even if that's in my way or from the fan bases out there. Awesome. I know, J- Jason, did you have your hand up before we uh, lose to yeah, I there. just had one more question. Uh, getting ready for pro day, getting ready for the draft process. How are you measuring day to day success? Is there like a statistical category where you wake up tomorrow and at the end of the day, you know, you were successful? Just get, can you give me that example? Uh, if you wake up tomorrow, what's your benchmark for success? Yeah. Um, so I, I have that. That's actually a great question. And actually a good way to look at it sometimes, depending on the person. Um, but I, I don't look at that way. You know, I just um, I'm big on just attacking every day. You know, when it comes to my workouts, when it comes to my. Um, if I lack any of those areas, then, you know, and that way, I would say it, it wasn't a successful day. But there isn't something that I do, you know, all right, then I'm successful. I don't really feel that way. But after the complete workout, if I, I know if I gave my all, if I did, or if there's some things that I should have did that I, I, that I didn't do. So, you know, I, I would just say that I attacked the day and then measure it off of that. So it's based mostly on your muscle memory and your athletic memory more than anything else? 
Yeah, I, w- I would just say all of my brand, really, you know, because from the time that I wake up, you know, I have a choice to be able to give enough to be able to show the coach that I'm working or not worry about the coach at all and just give my best during that day. You know, so every every single day, you know, I always choose right. It has a better time to wipe and I contemplate thinking the other way sometimes, but you know, I always find myself always just attacking the day. I mean the middle the middle of nowhere Mississippi, then middle of nowhere Indiana, then Kalamazoo. Do you do you just like small towns? Like, do you want to go to a big city at all, or do you kind of like living in the country? Yeah, I like living in the country, yeah. you know, but I can handle the big cities. I, you know, I've obviously explored the cities. I like the buildings a lot because I never really get to see those too much. Um, but yeah, if there's any point in time where I can get my own space and be able to stretch out wherever I go, that's where I'm going. The city stuff is cool and all to be able to come into, but you know, if I got an opportunity to be able to live outside of that, then you know, I'm going outside of it. Awesome. Well, Dwayne, hey, th- thanks so much for hanging with us. This this was great. I, I can't thank you enough for, you know, taking some time to, to just hang out. And I know you're, you're a busy guy. You got Zooms and workouts and all this stuff. So oh, appreciate yeah. it, man. No doubt. Appreciate you having me. All righty, man. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll stay in touch. And hey, if you're up here in Buffalo, let me know. We'll have to get some wings or do something. Like They're on you. You, you, just, you just told us that they're going to draft you. So we'll uh, we'll get that out there. <laughs> let, let people know. Hey. <laughs> Let's do it. We're going to speak it into existence. Nice. Hey, thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Have a good one. Right. We'll see you, man.